It's Friday, May 8th, the end of another week in quarantine. So I'm following stuff, looking for good stuff to rant about, and I find this one. One of Trump's personal valets has tested positive for the coronavirus. I didn't even know presidents had personal valets. It doesn't surprise me. Anyhow, he's a member of the U.S. Navy who serves as one of Trump's personal valets, and he has tested positive for coronavirus. The valets are members of an elite military unit dedicated to the White House and often worked very close to the president and the first family. Now, Trump was upset when he was informed Wednesday that the valet had tested positive, and the president was subsequently tested again by a White House physician. Now, the deputy press secretary, Hogan Gidley, said in a statement, the president and the vice president have since been tested negative for the virus, and they remain in great health. Now, this is the deputy White House press secretary. I didn't even know that they had a deputy secretary. They probably have an assistant deputy secretary. So just a whole layer of people working in the White House. Anyhow, the CDC says that people who feel healthy but recently had close contact with a person with COVID-19 should stay home and monitor their health. They should quarantine by staying home for 14 days. Do you think that our president, who doesn't wear a mask, is going to stay home for 14 days. He's not going to stay home. In spite of what the CDC recommends, he's not going to stay home. And the White, White House did not say whether Trump would adhere to these guidelines after his valet tested positive. Why should he? He's royalty. And he, does he have to set an example to his minions? No. He doesn't have to do shit. And that's just about what he does. So I'm listening to the radio this morning before I uh, got started working on my rant, and I hear this ad, they're asking for plasma from the people who have recovered from COVID-19. So I'm saying, here it is, things going on for two months, three months, and now they got ads running on the radio about donating plasma if you have recovered from COVID-19. Well, why Why do they have to ask? Why weren't they collecting a pint of blood from everybody who was in the hospital and recovered the minute they decided that antibody therapy was a good thing? So people are in the hospital, they're treated for COVID-19, they recover, and they go home. And now... Six weeks, eight weeks later, somebody's asking for their blood. Why didn't they collect the blood when these people were in the hospital? Now, I know not everybody ended up in the hospital, so the ad is okay. But we could have been collecting this blood all the time, for a long time. So, once again, hindsight is brilliant. And so I'll just move on to another story. This next story deals with a woman who defied a county official cease and desist letter ordering to close her salon because they weren't supposed to open for business until Friday. Shelly Luther owns a salon, a hair salon in Dallas, Texas, and she defied a recent order to keep her shop closed until Friday. She opened it up. The result was that she ended up in court. And the judge declared her as a, self, as a selfish person and uh, was going to fine her and told her, tell her to keep, keep her store closed until Friday or serve jail time. And she chose to disagree with the judge. The judge gave her an opportunity to apologize. And she disagreed with the judge. And she says... When you say I'm selfish because feeding my kids is not selfish, I have hairstylists that are going hungry because they would rather feed their kids. So, sir, if you think the law is more, more important than kids getting fed, then please go ahead with your decision. But I'm not going to shut my salon. So the judge sentenced her to seven days in jail and a $7,000 fine. 
the bottom line is Judge Napolitano, the guy who's the legal guru for Fox News, said that the judge was being excessive and that she's a hero because she refused to bend the knee. In addition to that, the governor called the judge's behavior excessive. The attorney general called the judge's behavior outrageous. And the bottom line was that Luther spent two days in jail for the court ruling and judge, and the Supreme Court of Texas had her released. And the lieutenant governor said he would pay the $7,000 fine. The way I see it, the governor ruled, stay at home, don't open till Friday. You're supposed to do that. If you disobey that rule, then you should be punished in some way, shape, or form. Now, if you put yourself in a situation in the courtroom where you, you know, you defy a judge, then you get an extra penalty. Yes, the judge was out of hand. But on the other hand, you, the so-called victim, should not have opened your business. To me, this is a violation of the law. If you robbed somebody to feed your children, You could go to jail for that, too. So to me, this is the same thing. You're dealing with life and death here, and uh, you shouldn't get off this easy. So I don't want to say any more about this. I'll see you all in... 